Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Craig. I'm born and raised in St. John. Uh, last time I was here, I was, was last year, I was finishing up my undergraduate in mechanical engineering. And uh, thanks all for coming today and uh, we'll get started. Uh, so uh, I'm an EIT at Irving Equipment right now uh, in the engineering department. Uh, we are a crane and heavy transport company. Uh, we also do some pile driving. Um, we're based out of Atlantic Canada and we recently opened a branch in Houston, Texas or just outside of Houston. Uh, this picture here is a picture of uh, the engineering department uh, where I work, also known as the lift lab. Uh, we would have a team of five planning engineers and two research and development engineers, uh, me being one of them. Um, and this is where we plan all of our crane work. Uh, so what we do is provide engineered lift solutions through careful equipment selection and planning. Uh, our goal is to ensure a safe and efficient solution before any of our equipment ever leaves the yard. Uh, so these pictures here are a picture of our cantilevered lifting beam. It's a specialized rigging system that was designed in the lift lab or in our engineering department. Uh, and what it does is uh, where cranes normally need to uh, lift a load from directly above uh, on a vertical axis, this gives us a little bit of freedom to, uh, in this case, reach underneath an overhead structure and uh, uh, lift, lift a, a heat exchanger uh, on a horizontal plane. Uh, so this is just kind of an example of some of the specialized uh, solutions that we would come up with. And uh, also it's an example of some of the outside of the box thinking we try to encourage uh, because sometimes, uh, you know, the best solution isn't always uh, the way that this work's been done in the past. Uh, so we, the way we plan everything is through CraneCAD. Uh, so CraneCAD is a CRAN planning, uh, excuse me, crane planning program that's built in AutoCAD. It's a custom application that's been in development for uh, over 20 years. Um, and the way it works is we have 3D models of all of our cranes and they're broken down into pieces. Uh, and a planner would go in and select what crane he'd like to use for the work. And he would uh, choose different parameters such as uh, support, um, support conditions on the outriggers or uh, counterweight or the boom length or what kind of hook uh, he'd like to use on the job. And CraneCAD will assemble a 3D model of the crane in that particular configuration. Uh, in a 3D environment for them to operate. And then normally we would have a 3D model of our job site that we're working on. Uh, there's also programming uh, in place that lets us operate the crane as if it was a real crane. Uh, so we can, you know, crawl it around and boom up and down, hoist the load up and down. Uh, we can swing the upper works. Uh, so this, this helps us uh, really go step by, step by step through our job and make sure that everything, uh, that we have clearance for everything and that the capacity is, uh, is correct. Uh, so the crane capacity uh, is basically how much a crane can lift. And that's always dependent on the crane's configuration and also the lift radius, which is the distance from the center axis of the crane to the load. Uh, we have, a database full of crane capacities and um, depending on you know what configuration was chosen and uh, the position of the crane uh, you know it, it'll tell you you're using you know 50 percent of the maximum capacity or or whatever it, it'll tell you how much capacity you have left um, So this here is a picture of, uh, well, I guess it's a drawing that CraneCAD would produce. Uh, this is 
typical crane CAD output. We've got a plan view of our of our crane. Uh, normally, the crane would be in like a at a critical point during the lift, uh, like maybe where there's a tight tolerance or where the uh, capacity is is particularly high. Um, so, uh, and then we have like an elevation view and an isometric view. Uh, we also have information uh, pertaining to the crane's configuration, the load, and we could also add information uh, if there was any kind of special rigging assembly involved. Uh, and this is all done, this is all pretty much automated through CraneCAD uh, based on whatever the planner had selected. Um, so part of my job is to look into new technology. And uh, like I said, CraneCAD's been around for over 20 years. Uh, and it's my job to keep CraneCAD current and moving forward into the future. Uh, one of the new technologies we've been looking into over the past uh, year or so is augmented reality, uh, which can best be defined as a computer enhanced view of the real world. Uh, so you can uh, look at real world objects and have uh, you know, extra information uh, about them. Um, uh, so this, this headset here, uh, that's the Microsoft HoloLens. Um, so it looks like a VR headset, but uh, the difference is it does not occlude your vision. You can still see the real world around you, but you can see, uh, in this case, a 3D model in front of you in the form of a hologram. Uh, so the HoloLens also has uh, voice commands and uh, it recognizes gestures with your hands. And that allows you to interact with this information and manipulate it. Uh, so how can augmented reality be used in lift planning? Uh, well, one way is just using it as a communication tool. Uh, you know, you could look at a two-dimensional drawing with a snapshot of a lift, but if you can watch an animation play from start to finish uh, that shows every step involved in the lift, uh, and also an animation that you can view from any angle, uh, it's just a lot clearer and we can communicate to our customer or uh, to operations a lot better what we had in mind when we planned the lift in CraneCAD. Um, also, uh, you know, our, our planners really work together. Uh, they collaborate a lot. Uh, hopefully one day we can have maybe a three-dimensional collaboration space using augmented reality. Uh, one idea that's been thrown around is, uh, you know, adding control to a crane, uh, being able to control perhaps a life-size hologram of a crane on site before having the real equipment show up. Um, and then we can uh, augment our standard two-dimensional uh, drawings uh, and make them three-dimensional uh, to enhance understanding. And I'll talk a little bit more about that one in a couple of slides. So this slide here, uh, it just shows, uh, going back to our cantilever lifting beam, uh, this was really a kind of a special project for us. Um, it showed, uh, I guess this kind of shows how we use the HoloLens to really uh, communicate how we would do this work. Um, in the past, removing uh, this type of heat exchanger would involve a lot of, uh, you know, steel removal and uh, a lot of waste. Uh, but using this tool, we were able to kind of just reach in and grab it without having to remove anything. Um, <clears throat> but where this is kind of a new and un unfamiliar tool, uh, we use the HoloLens to uh, explain to our customer, you know, why this method is better than the conventional means of, of doing the work. Um, so this video is uh, kind of what we had in mind about where we can take augmented reality into the future. Um, recently, 
Recently, we've been implementing telematics into a lot of our equipment. Uh, this is technology that can give us uh, live data about uh, different, um, different things about the machine, such as like the oil temperature, the engine hours, how much idle time has been on the machine, how much hook time, uh, things like that. And this could be useful to us in a couple different situations. Uh, first of all, I guess you could see, I wasn't using the HoloLens in this video. Um, so augmented reality is not uh, limited to just the headset. Uh, we can develop augmented reality applications on a mobile device. So if we had like a maintenance worker, uh, you know, we could have the crane uh, communicate what it needs and when rather than having to uh, uh, look up all that scheduling information on our own. Um, so this here is a small uh, kind of prototype that we've been working on uh, to enhance our or augment our two-dimensional lift plans that are produced in CraneCAD. Uh, so all we need to do here is look at it through the camera of our smartphone and it'll bring up all the 3D models that we use to plan this, uh, plan this job and it'll, it'll show an animation uh, in 3D. Uh, we see a lot of value in this because again, uh, communicating to our customer uh, why we'd like to use a certain crane or where there might be uh, a tight clearance is, is very important. Uh, and also, this could be useful in a situation like uh, like a safety talk before a job is executed. Uh, you could perhaps pause the, pause the animation at a critical point and discuss different safety uh, topics that might come up there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I left a little bit of time for questions if there's any questions? So what's your, what's your team look like? Like how many coders do you have and do you outsource the coding work to maintain these initiatives or? Uh, all the coding is done in house uh, by uh, Fred Dickinson. He is the inventor of CraneCAD. Uh, CraneCAD's always been coded in house and uh, I'm now here to uh, kind of take on some of what he does. And uh, after he retires, I'll be taking over CraneCAD on my own. Is, there, is that uh, product commercially available? Uh, no, we are keeping it in-house for now. Uh, but who knows what, uh, where it'll end up moving forward. Interesting. How many, how many pieces of equipment in the uh, Irving uh, inventory and how do you manage inventory in like well, what's we, the, you know, what's the size, scale, order of magnitude on what your, how big this organization is? Uh, we have dozens of cranes. Uh, I don't know, I don't know the exact number to be honest, uh, but definitely between 50 and 100 cranes, all from different manufacturers. Uh, we maintain like a database containing each crane's, uh, I guess all the possible configurations for a single crane, which could be in the thousands or the 10,000s. Uh, and the database would also contain all of the capacity information uh, for that crane's different configurations. Uh, we also need our 3D models so that we can actually display the crane in CraneCAD. And uh, I guess the database that we keep is what makes it be it is what makes our 3D model behave like a crane. Do you, do you use these models in that database to um, do inspections on the actual equipment for safety and like manage um, like a work order system for maintenance and whatnot? Uh, we don't, we only use it for planning. Uh, the reasons for that is because we have like a variety of different uh, uh, quality of models. 
Uh, some of them are older models, some of them are newer, some of them are more detailed than others. They're not like, uh, they wouldn't be, uh, yeah, that they wouldn't be used for uh, maintenance purposes. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, that was good. I was just wondering, um, in terms of educational, well, first question is, how many operators do you have and is there a shortage? And the next question is, I know uh, the local community college is now offering a heavy equipment program. I'm wondering if uh, Irving Equipment's working with them at all and if uh, you're looking at some maybe virtual reality technology for training purposes or to um, show like certain lift situations before actually going on site to do it. Um, as for your first question, I, I don't know if I can answer it, but I could definitely get back to you. <laughs> uh, but the virtual reality stuff is more up my alley. Uh, we've definitely, uh, talked about it. It seems like a lot of, uh, there's a lot of training, successful training programs out there using virtual reality. So it's, uh, it's definitely been on the radar for us. Uh, we haven't uh, started working on anything like that yet, but uh, I think we definitely have the tools. 